In 2025, XPeng sales grew by 130%. Revenue grew by over 50%. And the company sold 430,000 vehicles worldwide, including in 60 countries and regions outside of China, where its sales grew by 96% year on year. In 2024, Xpeng had a pretty terrible year. And I, for one, personally was baffled by it. I couldn't understand why Xpeng's cars weren't selling particularly well in China. Then things changed drastically. In fact, for all of 2025, Xpeng was the fastest growing automaker in the world. Its sales grew by nearly 130% over the course of 12 months. And what really kind of impressed me, I think, a lot was just how consistent they were. Now, a lot of other car companies, you look at their sales charts and they're just up, down, up, down, just chaos. Xpeng, every month, very, very consistent. And that says, well, one thing to me, one, they weren't fudging their sales numbers. And two, the demand is very much organic. It's not because of huge discounting, which Xpeng has never been accused of doing. It's simply because the product is incredibly compelling at its price point. Now, I should mention, I do own an Xpeng G6 and I've driven 20,000 kilometers in it over the past year. I'll do a separate video about that. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Happy New Year. And what a year it was. For me, honestly, it was a uh, very difficult year. I'm kind of scratching my head some days thinking, what can I do differently? What can I change to make things a bit easier? Anyway, Xpeng, they have been forced to do that, haven't they? Been forced to pivot, been forced to change, been forced to grow, to innovate. And it's, um, it's certainly working. If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so. And I'll put a link in the description below if you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. Xpeng saw moderate delivery growth in December. Not a big change, right? They sold 37,500 vehicles. That was a 2.2% year-on-year increase. And a slight rise from November, a 2% rise from November, right? Doesn't sound all that impressive. What's crazy is that even though they only grew their sales by 2% in December, their sales figures for the entire year still grew by such an insanely large number. Xpeng's most popular car by a pretty wide margin was the Mona M03. It delivered approximately 16,000, actually looking at the whole year, around 15,000 per month. So that made up a very large percentage of their sales, nearly half of their sales were the Mona M03. So we might actually see some significant growth from Xpeng in 2026 because they have an SUV version of the Mona. It's going to price similarly, I think about 18,000 US dollars from what I've heard. It's a bit bigger, of course, than the Mona because the Mona is a sedan, a lot more space. And it's the kind of market that I think an affordable vehicle will sell really well in. So Beyond the Mona, Xpeng sells quite a few models now. They've got the P7, which is technically a sedan, but looks like more of a, a coupe-style vehicle, and I test drove that in China. was shocked by how good it was. I want one now more than I did before. There's the P7 Plus as well, and there's a newer version of the P7 Plus. There's also an e-rev version of the P7 Plus. There's the G6, which has been updated, and there's a G6 e-rev. There's a G7 and a G7 E-Rev. There's a G9 and I believe a G9 E-Rev is coming. Uh, there's also the X9 and an X9 E-Rev as well. The G6 is Xpeng's second most popular car. Well, it was for 2025. From January to November, Xpeng delivered around 71,000 units. So probably about 87, probably about 78,000 for the total for the whole year. That was around about a 50% increase versus last year. And it contributed about 19% to Xpeng's delivery numbers for the year. Xpeng launched updated versions of the G6 and the G9 on, well, in March the 13th. And the P7 Plus delivered 5,000 units in November, which was mean, means it was the company's third best-selling vehicle. 
it made up 13% of Xpeng sales, the P7 Plus. Now there is a new version of the P7 Plus. I think it looks a lot better, particularly the rear of it. And that's gonna come as an EV version and an E-Rev version. I'll do a video on that as well, guys. The X9 was the next best selling vehicle with approximately 2000 deliveries per month. But you can see here, the bulk of Xpeng sales are really made up of the P7 Plus, the G6 and the Mona M03. But now I think, you know, Xpeng's gonna more than double its lineup for 2026. They're gonna have the P7, which they've only had on sale for a couple of months. They're gonna have E-Rev versions of almost all of their cars. The P7 Plus has been updated as well. Uh, there's a new G9L coming. So the G9L, I believe, is a stretched version of the G9, but it's a new model. It will be a, a big refresh coming to the G9. And I believe that model is actually coming to the Australian market as well. For the full year of 2025, Xpeng delivered 430,000 vehicles, which was a 126% increase year on year. And they delivered 45,000 vehicles in overseas markets, meaning 10% of their sales were sold overseas. That was a 96% year on year increase, says CNEVPost.com. By the end of 2025, says CNEV, Xpeng had expanded its overseas presence to 60 countries and regions. 60, that's a, that's a large number. Cumulative deliveries for Xpeng since they were invented or started selling cars back in, I believe, 27, 2016, was 1,020,000 by the end of 2025. But here's the thing. Xpeng, of course, like pretty much every other pure EV manufacturer, has historically lost money almost every quarter, well, every quarter, actually. But in the last quarter of 2025, they basically broke even, I believe, only lost a very small amount of money in the third quarter of the year, only, I believe, about a couple of hundred million dollar loss, which is a really small number. So Xpeng's getting to that point where if they can just make another couple of hundred thousand cars, they will either break even or start making money on every EV they sell. That will put them in a very powerful position. And remember, they do spend a fair bit of money, but very somehow very frugally. I'm not really sure how. It's incredible that they don't lose massive sums of money like Neo. You would think, like looking at Xpeng, look at Neo, look at Xpeng, you would think, that Xpeng would be losing billions, but it's Neo that's losing billions. And why do I say that? Well, have a look at Xpeng, what they do. They have four different flying cars. And one of those looks like a literal, incredible masterpiece from the future. It can carry, I believe, 12 people, or it might be a 20 seat version as well. Uh, they have literally a factory building these flying vehicles because they've got more than 10,000 orders for these vehicles that cost more than 200,000 US dollars each, which is remarkable, making them the largest flying car company manufacturer in the world. Then they've got their AI. Of course, their full self-driving isn't quite at Tesla's level yet, but it's getting there. And they obviously have to invest a lot of money to get that tech themselves, to build that themselves. As a result, though, they don't have to pay Momenta or some other, some other Chinese tech company for their service for their self-driving tech. So that's one advantage that the company has. But that said, you do have to invest in order to improve that. And Xpeng have done that. They've got their own Turing chips, which are much faster than any other chips in the industry. And I think, you know, if you look at the innovation behind this company, what they're doing, you would think, I mean, their R&D budget would be astronomical, but it's not. It's relatively relatively small in comparison to some of its peers. It just seems to me that they're very efficient with the money that they spend. So what is going to happen in 2026? What do you guys think? I personally don't think the e-revs will all will work out. I don't think the demand will be as high as what Xpeng might be hoping. I do think the P7 will sell well, a G9L will sell well. And I particularly think that the Mona SUV is going to be their biggest seller for sure. That will help drive a lot of their sales. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. 
So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below. Thank you.